In the previous video, we saw the calculation for the radius of convergence for e to the x. And now we're going to calculate the radius of convergence for another Taylor series. In this example, we're going to look at the natural log of x and the Taylor series for it centered at x equals 1. Our goal here is to find the radius of convergence for this Taylor series. All right, so first thing we need is the Taylor series. So I won't go through all the steps, but the natural log of x has this Taylor series here, x minus 1 minus x minus 1 squared over 2 plus x minus 1 cubed over 3 plus a negative x minus 1 to the 4 over 4 plus dot, dot, dot. OK, so this is our Taylor series. One thing that's useful to do at this point is to write it in summation notation. And this is useful because our next step is going to be to use the ratio test. And to use the ratio test, we need to know what is the nth term of the series. So writing it in summation notation helps us figure out the nth term of the series. OK, so we can see that we have this positive, negative, alternating thing going on. Our first term is positive, second term is negative, third term is positive, fourth term is negative. So that means that we have a negative 1 to the either n or n plus 1. Let's check it out and see. When we have n equal to 1, then that creates negative 1 to the 1 plus 1 or negative 1 squared. That makes the first term positive. So it looks like we need to have negative 1 to the n plus 1 rather than negative 1 to the plain old n. All right, next thing that we see here is that we have x minus 1 to the nth power. And that's because our first term has x minus 1 to the 1. Our second term has x minus 1 squared. Our third term has x minus 1 cubed, and so on. And then we have our denominator. We can write this divided by 1 if it helps. We can see that our denominator is n because the denominator for the first term is 1. The denominator for the second term is 2. Denominator for the third term is 3, and so on. All right, so this is our Taylor series for the natural log of x. And this is good for x values near 1. And now in the rest of this problem, we'll figure out x values exactly how close to 1. All right, so we need to know what is a n. And a n is negative 1 to the n plus 1 times x minus 1 to the n over n. And really what we will be using is absolute value of an plus 1 over an. So let's go ahead and take absolute values now just to simplify things so that we don't have to carry around all this uh, negative 1 stuff. So absolute value of an is x minus 1 to the n over n all that absolute valued. And that means that the absolute value of an plus 1, we can find that by plugging in n plus 1. So we've got x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. OK. And again, like I've said before, I like to go ahead and rewrite this right away just to clean things up because we know that we're going to divide a n plus 1 by a n. So we want to make things so that they'll cancel out nicely. So let's write this as x minus 1 to the n times x minus 1. All right, now we are ready to use our ratio test. So for our ratio test, remember, we're looking at the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity of x minus 1 to the n 
times x minus 1 over n plus 1. And then now let's work on the a n term. So we have n over x minus 1 to the n. All right, so we can see that the x minus 1s to the n cancel out. And that leaves us with the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of x minus 1 times n over n plus 1. When we look at this and try to evaluate this limit, we see it has the form infinity over infinity. So we need to use L'Hopital's rule. So we're going to take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the top is x minus 1. The derivative of the bottom is just 1. All right, so now we can see we have the limit as n goes to infinity of x minus 1 over 1, absolute valued. And of course, this is just equal to the absolute value of x minus 1. Now we want to set this less than 1 so that this series will converge because we're trying to find all the x values that will make this Taylor series converge. So we have, let me write this a different way. So we're going to have x minus 1 less than 1. Or in other words, that means that negative 1 is less than x minus 1 is less than 1. Adding 1 across, we've got 0 less than x less than 2. And so this Taylor series will converge. for x values between 0 and 2. And we won't um, talk about the endpoints, but this will not converge for x equals 0. OK, so here's our interval of convergence. And our radius of convergence then is 1, because if we think about how wide this interval is, this interval is 2, two units wide. And the radius of convergence is half the width of the interval of convergence. So our radius of convergence is 1. <laughs>